before we even went on camera, you said this has been kind of a dividing or polarizing issue. Uh, what are you hearing from your members about the antibiotic issue? Well, I think everybody agrees that responsible antibiotic use is important. Whether or not you're, um, you're knowing you're an NAE flock or no antibiotics ever, um, it's a veterinarian's responsibility to make sure that the birds are healthy. So even in those flocks, if you have a sick flock, you know, a veterinarian is going to treat that flock because it's the right thing to do for animal husbandry, animal welfare. Um, but you're right, it's, it's definitely a divided industry on whether or not it's better to go raise without antibiotics or it's better to um, use an anti or low dose of antibiotics um, for prevention. Um, obviously with guidance 213 that has in the veterinary feed directive that just came out um, starting January 1st of this year, you can no longer use medically important antibiotics for growth promotion purposes. So the industry has already moved away from that. The other part of that is veterinary oversight. So all antimicrobials that are prescribed need to be under the direction of a veterinarian. And in the poultry industry, when we're very fortunate we've got you know, excellent poultry veterinarians out there monitoring the health of all of our flocks um, who can make that determination as to whether an antibiotic is necessary or not. Why do you think poultry has become the lightning rod for this issue? Because we hear all these food service companies coming out saying, well, we're only going to have antibiotic-free poultry. These companies also serve uh, you know, pork sandwiches and beef sandwiches. Why are they picking on poultry? Well, I think at the end of the day, because of how we're structured as an industry, it's simpler. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's, a, it's simpler for us to move away from traditional antibiotic use. Because of the shorter life cycle? Because or? of the shorter life cycle, because of vertical integration. Um, on the red meat side, so the beef industry or the, or the pork industry, um, the, those animals may move around a little bit from owner to owner, especially in the beef industry. And so tracking what antibiotics are used in that process may be a little bit more difficult. But for, for us, um, you know, I, I think that the trend is definitely moving in, in that direction away from using antibiotics. But um, you know, that's customer preference. And I think at the end of the day, customer preference is pushing this much faster than, than FDA can ever, can ever push this. And the ironic thing about it, though, is more than 80% of the antibiotics that have been used in poultry are not on the list of medically important Absolutely. antibiotics. Absolutely, ionophores are the main antibiotic that is used, um, and that is not used in human medicine at all, so there's no concern for resistance, which is the reason that people have been moving away from medically important antibiotics was for the issue of resistance. But yes, ionophores are, are very important for the industry to maintain gut health, um, and when you have a healthier gut, you're gonna have better absorption of nutrients, so birds are gonna just grow better and do better, and it's just, it's an added bonus of ionophores. But still, to a lot of consumers, they're in a supermarket and they see no antibiotics ever, raised without antibiotics. That sounds healthier or more wholesome to them. It also costs a lot more. It, it does cost more, but at the end of the day, um, you know, food safety is, is what I work, that, that's my area of expertise, and I use that term quite loosely. I'm not sure I'm an expert in that, but um, when you look at food safety and you look at potential um, Salmonella or Campylobacter, I don't know that there's any difference between um, regular conventional raised chicken and raised with antibiotics. So we don't want people to think that because they're buying chicken that's raised with antibiotics that they can mishandle that product. Um, and that's very important that it all needs to be handled the same. Last year, the American Association of Avian Pathologists uh, released a couple of statements, one on welfare, one on antibiotics. And one of them uh, specifically uh, urged the industry, uh, they just said that the health and well-being of flocks should not be sacrificed in the name of marketing an antibiotic-free product. Um, is there a concern about that, you feel, from a, a production standpoint? I think that the industry would agree with that statement. Um, if you have a sick flock, it needs to be treated, whether or not you're, you, you, that flock was initially destined to be raised without antibiotics. Um, I think it's the veterinarian's role to, to treat those birds if they are in fact sick, and that's what we're seeing. Do you think by coming out and making these antibiotic-free claims has that, it's obviously created at least a two-tier poultry market. Does that make the, what we might call conventional poultry, does that cast a negative light on it when we start talking about 
antibiotic free and we put a higher price tag on it? I think it has the potential to. Um, I, you know, again, we're, we're all about choice in the marketplace. So whether you want organic chicken or raised by antibiotic chicken or conventional chicken, that's fine. And it's going to have a different price point. So it's really up to the customer to determine whether they want to pay that premium for that, that product or not. But in the end, and I think the National Chicken Council has said this, it's pretty much all antibiotic free anyway. Technically speaking, yes. We have withdrawal times that we have to follow per FDA, and USDA tests all meat products, um, not just poultry, but red meat and as well, um, for any residues of antibiotics that may be in the meat. And there aren't any on poultry. 